Hi, everyone. Today is Wednesday, March 17. Thank you so much for joining uh, today's SMI community meeting. Um, I'm going to moderate. My name is Michelle Nurley. Bridget has volunteered to take notes and run all the things. So thanks, Bridget. Uh, we have several discussion items today that we're going to breeze through. Um, first, we're going to talk about, uh, Bridget is going to talk about um, KubeCon, Cloud Native Con Europe. Um, I have a discussion topic on traffic split. Um, and also the another discussion topic about the CID, CRD, excuse me, CRD uh, API group inversion. Um, and then uh, Bridget has a topic around supporting custom auth filters to allow delegating auth logic to third party components. So uh, if you do have a discussion item, please feel free to throw it in the agenda. Um, and then we'll have time for introductions uh, and any other topics at the end as well. So um, that's it. Bridget, I'll hand it off to you for your first item. All right, so nice and easy and short. Uh, we have in the past, um, Cloud Native Austin, in fact, has arranged for us to do a community session during um, KubeCon. And I'm wondering if anyone would like to volunteer to be in charge of scheduling and running a call for, you know, to promote the project um, during uh, KubeCon EU coming up May 4th to 7th. It's okay if Lee doesn't want to, but um, if he does not want to, I probably will end up having to do it. And it's terrible if I do all the things. So does anyone have any interest in participating in that and or running it? And I'm looking at you, Nick, Mr. Europe. <laughs> I was just about to say, if Lee doesn't want to do it, I would be more than happy. I um, great. I took. I sent in the form. <laughs> yeah. Oh, you sent in the form. Fantastic. Yeah. I just Did because you... it's like, oh shit! Like I've seen that message three times. Like holy hell, we of course, of course. Yep. Like, and so the great. Please continue. Uh, yeah, and so the the this time I um, so so I'm taking all the liberties on all everyone's behalf, making all the assumptions, so making an ass out of it. Right. And so um, um, this time the there was a choice with respect to the format. And so last time the format was, um, you know, like uh, hopefully you know anyway you guys were there, you all were there, you know the format. And so this time it is, um, well I ticked the box for both. Um, that plus a, a bit of booth time so that we can show things in action um, and so that we can interact with folks there. And I figured, shoot, if, if nobody else, if, if it isn't going to be the case that none of y'all are going to sign up, everybody's raising their hand now. So that's, that's great. We'll have a booth covered and I don't know. So I'll, I'll do that. I'll, I'll um, I think the action item is for Lee to add a comment with some info about when and where, links and, and times. And also call call for content and um, recordings and like, and how do we, yeah, organizing things. Okay, and it sounds like Nick will help you with that. Mr. Jackson. See the look of panic on his face when he when it was he thought that I was going to have to do some organization. You're just going to help him with wonderful content. For example, uh, info about exciting new work that you're working on. This is great. Okay, back to you, Michelle. Okay, great. Thank you so much. Um, all right, so uh, I'm just going to paste. A link to this issue that I opened here. The next op next topic is on traffic split. So um, uh, basically, I'm implementing a v1 alpha four of traffic split in OSM, and I just ran into like a little bit of ambiguity. So um, and actually, it's been brought up uh, once before by someone, but I wanted to just kind of follow up and give everyone a brief overview so you can throw your thoughts into that issue. So essentially in traffic target, we have a source and a destination. We have some rules that uh, we apply to traffic from the source to that destination or from, from a set of sources to a destination. So each rule is basically a reference to a traffic spec. So an HTTP route group or a TCP route group or UDP route if we have that in there. Um, so anyways, there's some attributes that apply to those rules. 
And uh, a rule can have an optional match condition. So you can say in an HP route group, you can specify um, different uh, types of matches. So one match condition would be you want to match on user agent uh, Chrome or something. And then an, another uh, match condition might be like you want to, you know, match on some path with some other header, for example. So um, that's all well and good. Uh, we wanted to do AB split, uh, AB um, deployment with traffic split. So we applied a, a matches condition on the traffic split. And so what happens now in, in the way that we've defined it in the SDK, and I have the actual lines of code implement, are uh, linked in the issue, um, but traffic split doesn't have a set of rules. It has a set of matches and matches is just a slice of typed uh, local object references in Kubernetes. So you can say, hey, um, match on uh, these HTTP route groups, but there's not necessarily to my knowledge, a way to specify like within that HTTP route group object, like the actual match condition, it could have a set of match conditions. So right now, the way I'm implementing an OSM is that I apply rules for all of the match conditions that are in that object. But I'm just kind of wondering, do we want to go that route? Um, slightly ambiguous. Uh, do we want to match on specific conditions with a traffic split? Any immediate thoughts? Has anybody else run into this issue? So I've, I've, I've hit this issue a number of times. And the key thing that I always fall down on is the lack of a virtual service. Now, I know that's a kind of a, like a, a meta element, but that like to be able to do traffic split and to be able to say, I want to route 20% of traffic to API primary and 20% to API canary. I'm wondering whether it would also be useful to be able to have a, a construct where SMI could define what API primary and API canary was as, as like a, a definition for a virtual, you know, virtual service, which, which could be a have selection criteria um, or maybe you need both. I'm not sure I understand what's missing between the traffic split and like the concept of a virtual service. Yeah, so so I think it's um it's it's I mean it might be specific to console, but but console has um has the concept of of I'm saying it's a virtual service, but you can basically create a um a service which is an aggregated collection of endpoints. And you can basically specify metadata. So I could say, hey, give me all of the endpoints which are tagged with uh, V1 and the service name is, is API. And then I could create like a virtual service, which is like API dash V1. So then in my, my traffic split, but that, that you see that service doesn't actually exist. Um, so, but that's fine. Like I could still reference the service and, and have the meta criteria from, from within SMI, but I have to create the virtual service definition out of bound of, of SMI, which, which always feels a little, um, Istio has exactly the same thing. Istio has got traffic, I forget the name of the thing, Lee will tell me better, like traffic director or traffic thingy, whatever it's called. There's a, there's a block where you can basically um, yeah, define uh, it. destination rules. Right. So, so maybe it's worth thinking about the inclusion of that as well. Yeah, I'm trying to think about it. Do you have an issue already open for it? I think I created one at some point and I would gladly re-raise it if, if it would be, um, I could maybe just create like a, rather than an issue issue, maybe it's easier if I mock up what I'm thinking, and then we can figure out whether it's worth looking at. Yeah, I think that would be helpful. I could definitely rabbit hole on this because um, I think OSM just uses, is it's native SMI, so we just use Kubernetes services for everything. So we haven't necessarily run into barriers here. Um, yeah, I mean, it's, you know, to, to be honest, it, it's not, um, in, in terms of, um, like I, we can use Kubernetes services and console as well. Mm -hmm. But the problem is we have to configure the Kubernetes service. Yeah. Which is out of bound of SMI. That, that's, that was, you know, it's not, I say it's not a problem. It just feels disconnected. 
that I've got to do some stuff in SMI and some stuff in in my native platform. And and you would have exactly the same issue, I believe, with Istio that you would end yeah. up setting up the you know the traffic route, which then creates the service and stuff. But it's um, out of bound and, and probably with with maybe I, I'm not OSM it could benefit as well. Yeah. Just, Let's chat more about it. Um, I think this might be parallel though to the matches conversation if I'm not mistaken, right? Okay, um, on the matches, if we did wanna go uh, continue down that route, do we, would we want to specify on certain match conditions or do we wanna leave it so that you just reference the typed local object reference, which is an HTTP route group, which we don't validate, but... Um, and, and you just apply all the match conditions in there. I think I would have to see an example. Okay, yeah, that's cool. Um, I'll just like throw the issue there. If anybody has any uh, like thoughts around it, let me know. And then I'll also drop up an example on that. Yeah, because I think I I I, just, I completely agree with you, Michelle. I think then there is something that needs to to be done with with that area. Um, the last time I was I was using it, it felt awkward, and and it you know it was it was based on knowledge of, of implementation at a particular time. Yeah. Um, okay. Cool. Sounds good. All right. So one other thing I had was uh just an update on moving crds to um v1 uh is this issue I, I picked it up like yesterday and i'm just i'm working on it and i just wanted to say hey i'm working on it so it's coming and basically if we don't update it um s mines 1.22 of kubernetes is not gonna work so um that's it that's all i got uh what's the next topic um bridget i'll pass it back to you oh yeah, so I was taking a look at anything that had come up since our last meeting, and I think this uh, issue actually came in right before our last meeting, but since we haven't um, commented on it at all, I thought maybe I should make sure that we at least update it if we are um, you know, going to have any uh, input for this person. And they were asking about supporting a custom authorization filter to allow delegating authorization logic to a third-party compo component. Specifically, they wanted to configure SMI to use the, the Envoy uh, authorization filter. And I thought, hmm, we should at least bring it up. We're not, we're not going to necessarily cover it in detail here, but we should at least bring it up so that we can figure out if there is somebody on the call who wants to take this on and put some comments on it. You know, completely say, no, this is not something that's going to happen at all. I mean, I think it's a sensible, a sensible idea. Um, I would sort of also add that it, it feels like there's a specific implementation in mind that, that yeah. somebody, somebody no, has and, and may therefore maybe the, you know, the, they're the best people to, to present a, a spec change on that. Cause I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't say I've got the the sort of the knowledge to. Um, I mean, I think it feels yeah, it feels sensible. Yeah, the yeah, the, yeah from my perspective, the the request in concept feels yeah, yeah feels feels fantastic, feels great. The the fact that they've called out Envoy filter and OPA has two specific technologies are. Um, are highly relevant, highly appropriate, or you know, popular. Also, are two specific technologies, of which hopefully we would ensure that um, that the design would ensure that something like Caverno would potentially also work for our, um, as an auth system, and maybe not just Nginx or Envoy filters, but filters of other. I mean, it's a, I think it's an interesting thing, right? And. And to, to like echo Lee's point, like LinkedIn obviously is an Envoy based traffic, traffic, traffic mesh isn't Envoy based, um, it uses traffic proxy. Both of those may have a comparable feature, but it, it obviously certainly wouldn't be with an Envoy. And, and I, as popular as Envoy is, it, it kind of, 
I don't think we should basically write a direct, you know, we shouldn't be directly exposing Envoy features without considering an abstraction as, as, as such. Um, but as, a, as an abstraction, it, it feels like a sensible thing to do. And I would, I would recommend like, yeah, I think the person who sort of issues probably the best person to be able to come up with the. Nginx service mesh with Nginx plus as their proxies, kind of another, you know, to, to add to the list and to also highlight that um, uh, filters or, or that, that proxy has pluggable filters as well. And so there's a good. So the question is as well, do we, do we also jump the future proof and just think in general filters and define filter types because WASM filters are like whether you, you, uh, you think WASM filters are the new hype or, or not, I, I think WASM is pretty, pretty interesting. So we could even start thinking about how SMI could support that side of things as well. And it might just be something where it's filter type authorization or, or type request filter or, or something like that. And, and you can get away with a generic abstraction, which would be I just want to jump in here. I think that's an interesting idea, supporting optional WASM filters. But I also think that there's maybe, and I agree, like I would really love to see a spec change or what this user is envisioning. Um, so I'd love a contribution from them. But also like it's up to the implementation to decide what like other technologies they integrate with. So you'd have to like, for OSM, you'd have to like enable um, OPA integration or OPA usage, and we have to be able to support that. So I think like specifying that filter is the implementation level. And then for us, like we need to be able to support the type of identity that folks need um, in order to use that auth filter. So right now we support service accounts and I think uh, we might need um, to support like to other, like maybe something else uh, in order to support OPA. So I think that there's like two ways we can go about it. We can go higher level and figure out what the that higher level abstraction is, but also at a lower level, what identity needs uh, have we not met in SMI that we can add to the spec in order to like um, fuel this kind of uh, integration. Is there an easy set of identities that you currently uh, support somewhere that I can reference? Because I have some people that would be two different people that would be interested in this. Yeah, that would be great. Um, we support service accounts right now solely. Um, I think there has been talk of supporting Spiffy identities, um, uh, and we haven't added that or have had much request for it. Um, so yeah, I would be really interested in uh, understanding more. Can you put as a comment in there what you do currently support, just so that it's really clear when I link them to this issue, please? Yeah, definitely. Pretty sure it's only service account and the rationale behind that is because it's cryptographically verifiable within the cluster. So Bridget, I think we have some next steps, right? We um, want to ask the user for, or the, uh, the person who submitted the issue for like what they, um, what they're looking for, and uh, and we can also uh, talk to them about our thoughts around um, what kind of identity needs to be supported, and also um, uh, if they're looking for some sort of high levels filter specification. Um, and then I'll add that link to the service account stuff um, for Marlo. Okay. Um I did not write down everything you just said, but I will follow up with you and make sure that that person gets their answer. Yeah, do you want me to update the issue if that's easier? If you would like, that sounds wonderful. Sounds good. All right, um, anybody else have uh, discussion topics or want to introduce themselves? Hey, Nick, what's going on with the SDO adapter? <laughs> and do you need help? Um, 
No, I haven't, uh, I haven't done anything. Um, the proof of concept around the SDK has been pretty good. I've just been getting the um, service splitting stuff working really good with console so that I can use Flagger um, and been kind of working through that, which um, has been keeping me busy, and, but it works great and I love Flagger. I am the biggest convert in the world to Canary deployments with Flagger. Um, the, I've got all of the, like the build stuff. So being able to, I think the key thing around that is just support that very narrow subset that we need to do to unblock Kubeflow. So that then Kubeflow can then come, once Kubeflow is SMI compliant, it obviously then can, um, can be used by um, everybody who supports the SMI, which is a really cool thing indeed. Uh, so like if I can find some time this weekend, I, sh I can maybe present that to you all next meeting. That would be awesome. Can we move the SMI controller SDK to the SMI org or service mesh interface? Yeah, org or? yeah I, I just created it in my personal repo because uh, I didn't know whether you'd hate my junk or whether you wanted to like get some somebody who knows how to do, code to do it properly or, you know. I'm supportive if that's um, good for y'all. And I'd love to hear from our maintainers. If there's I mean, I, I think from my perspective, like just giving a quick update on that, it the, the new Kube Builder stuff just works really great. And um, there's there's a lot of stuff I think we can, you know, we, we can, well, I think it's, it's always gonna be a problem for us because we ask the SMI Go SDK, which is a hard dependency. So like, you know, Kube Builder can do things like um, generate all of the CRDs and it can create customized config and, and stuff which saves a little bit of maintenance. It's not necessary, but you know, some of the stuff that you can do with, with auto generation is, is kind of neat. I don't think we're going to be able to take advantage of that because of the, the SMI SDK, but um, it doesn't really matter. It's not, it's not, it's not a massive, a massive problem. So yeah, I mean, if, if you'd be interested, I can um, actually just blanket transfer that over to you all. Um, I'm, I'm very excited. Click that button. Yep, big, big plus one for me. Could, could I ask Michelle in, in the short term, could I be um, like get push rights on that without having to go the whole kind of pull through whilst we're just thrashing, um, yeah. thrashing that controller out? I'm it would simplify the workflow rather than having to, when I'm just pushing random commits to it. Yeah, I'm good with that. I think in the contributing guide, we should just like say, hey, like this is what it is for now. And we're good with it because this is something we're experimenting with and trying to like make work. And especially for the SEO adapter, it's really nice to have that in the form. Yeah, but it's it's been, I've been like, you know, dog fooding it with, with console um, and it works great. Like it's totally, um, it's totally great. So. Awesome. Hey, do, um, I'm in the SDK code base right now um, and fixing up things because we don't have like auto generation of CRDs is a huge pain. So would it make sense for me to move the SDK to Kube Builder? Does that, do you find that helpful or do you think that's like kind of a, like a waste? Uh, so the question is, if you can, I don't know whether you can. So I think the problem is that Kube Builder doesn't use so like the the SD the the SDK generates all of the um, I forget the name of them but listers and stuff that's right isn't it like all of those auto generated resources yeah you know in like the API folder so you've got like the the obviously um, I think it's like the listers and the like all of the the internal mechanism for queue watching and stuff like that in terms of inside of Kube. I don't think Kube Builder generates those because Kube for Builder manages that internally. So you, it would be great if you could. Okay, I'm gonna look into it. I don't know. I, I haven't really touched Kube Builder much, but I've only heard really good things. That's all. I read some of the book. <laughs> um, okay, so. Uh, I don't think we have any other topics. Does anybody have an, oh, Blake, please. 
Yeah, I had one. Hopefully it's quick. So uh, during the last meeting there, uh, we were talking about multi-cluster federation and scheduling a call on the off week to kind of dive into more detail of what folks' requirements were uh, there. I didn't see anything on any agendas or in Slack of whether that call was scheduled. I'm wondering if that happened. And if not, is that something we still plan to get on the calendar and dig no, into deeper? Uh, I think I dropped the ball on that. Let me do that right now <laughs> and not mess that up. Thank you. Okay, great. Well, Thank you. interested in joining too. Okay. Well, I will schedule it, Michelle. Thank you so much, Bridget. I appreciate that. Anything else? All right, you get three minutes back. Thank you so much for joining and see you on the multi-cluster call, hopefully. And if not that, next SMI community meeting in two weeks. Bye-bye.